So welcome back friends. Today we're gonna to do a real world, real forest comparison between the biggest silky folding saw, the big boy, and the smallest, the pocket boy. I'll tell you what, as an amateur forester and tool aficionado, I have come to love silky saws. I just absolutely adore them. The quality, the value that you get, and just the incredible uh, cutting potential of these things. Now, if you haven't used a silky saw, um, well, you're in for a treat. They're just, they're head and shoulders above all the other ones that you have at your Ace and your hardware store. You, even the Coronas and all of that. I mean, they all look very similar, but the devil's in the details, and the guys at, at Silky get these things right. Now, what I have here are two extremely different saws. Now, what's the application for these? You know, what, 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 is, what am I using them for? Well, we have a large piece of property. Forestry is a big portion of it. And what I have found is that these saws are so good that you don't, I, I just rarely use a chainsaw in limbing type of operations, you know, <laughs> operations, limbing, forest clearing, that sort of thing, wildland prevention. They're, they're so good and the experience is so much better with the saw, uh, especially when it's hot. We don't have the face shield, we don't have the hard hat, we don't have the, the chaps, the safety equipment, the hearing, hearing protection, the gas, the oil, the bar, the expense, the noise, on and on and on. Sometimes a handsaw is the better way to go. Now, my first Silky that I bought was this one uh, of the folding saws and this is the big boy and i thought oh man the bigger the better right uh, of course a bigger saw is going to cut better but i have not found that to be very good i don't think that these big silkies like this i i think i think that they're they're kind of they don't i don't like them how about that i don't i don't like them i i think that they're too big uh, for the very reason is when you're cutting and working you need to have two hands right and this, the ergos on this, and the way it's designed, and how big it is, you cannot, with unless you're uh, Superman or the Incredible Hulk, you can't put a lot of tip pressure on the saw with the hand. It's not very comfortable to hold. It's definitely made for two hands. Well, I don't typically want to cut two hands. Usually, I need to hold a branch uh, to have one hand to keep it from pinching, and the other hand I want to cut with. I find myself getting very tired with the saw. I you know when you when you have something in your mind you think this oh the silky big boy the 2000 you know i'm a big boy and i need a big boy saw uh, this is going to be the best but what i keep finding is i start off with it and i end up not using it and no one wants to use it because it's just too darn big too darn big and too difficult to cut with you can't get the pressure on it now if you're the guy that's out there going to be cutting with two hands all the time well maybe that's for you go for it but what we're going to try today is I just ordered this up. This is the smallest one. This is the Pocket Boy. And we'll see if indeed this may be a better cutter for the particular application we're talking about right there. And then we'll wrap it up. The folding saws are very nice because, well, the very reason that they fold. Um, they, you can poke them in a back pocket. These are sharp. You can't put those in a pocket. You can't work with them without a sheath. They're kind of dangerous. Um, and a lot of applications are not great. This one here, but my plan is for it, when it's not being used in forestry, is to, I'll carry this in my dirt bike bag, uh, to cut any branches or things out of the way. Uh, and nice to have a folding saw. You do not want a big open saw uh, bouncing around in your backpack. So be careful when you're buying these saws also. They come in three different teeth configurations. I made the mistake the first time I ordered one of these. I didn't look closely at it and I bought one that had fine teeth. And the teeth were super fine. They were like grafting you know landscape type of guy you know you wanted you mr miyago mr miyagi type of <laughs> type of saw not good for for uh a fast cutting and for rough cutting you know, and for forest clearing so i sent that one back and i got not the, even the meaty one but the super aggressive one the one that has the big gnarly teeth they're not that much different than the big one uh, or the big boy either it has the big gnarly teeth as well one feature that I've never really understood on this is that you can, it's got two positions. You can hyper, kind of hyper extend the blade there. I, you know, to be honest with you, I haven't really found it that useful. It's actually counterintuitive. I like to have a saw that's got even more curve than this, especially a radius like this, because when you're cutting overhead, it helps to get the top of the branch cut. These, this design, the shape here is not super good for long reaching and cutting overhead. So enough talk, let's take this over to a branch and see one-handed if the big boy 
or the pocket boy can keep up with the big boy. So let's see what's what here. So we've got a, a ponderosa pine here. This is very typical of the size of stuff that we'll be cutting. We'll start with the big boy, uh, the one-handed cut, because a lot of this stuff has twist and it's got some you know, memory in it and it'll want to twist up and it'll bind and you need to kind of control it here with a hand. So it's, it's hard to be scientific with this, but what I'll do is I'll just cut my normal pressure the best I can. We'll put a timer up there in the post edit and we'll see, but let's, uh, I'll kind of count the strokes here and we'll see how long does it take to get through this with, and what's the experience with the big boy. Okay, so I'm counting 18 strokes and what I have always noticed with the saw is it's, it makes my forearms, it kills my forearms because I'm pushing so hard against this and I don't have any assistance from the ergos or from the handle and it tires me out. I do not, I don't like the saw, I never have liked it. Now if we take the same thing here with the pocket boy, uh, it's definitely choked up. We're going to be closer to the blade. Um, the ergos on it are a little bit better, still not great, but let's see. 18 was the count. Let's see what we got here. Sixteen. Okay, so uh, what was the experience? It actually cut in fewer strokes, uh, and um, I don't feel so pumped out. My arm doesn't feel near as tired as this. So, is there a downside? Is there any reason to 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 go with the big saw? Um, being this is the first time I'm using, I've used this. I'm just kind of thinking out loud, but. The, the other thing is, is I can put two hands on here pretty comfortably. I can wrap around here, so if I do want to get more pressure, so if I wanted to put two hands on, 11 strokes. Now with the big boy, of course I can put two hands on it. I'll go as hard as I can. Okay, it take, still takes a stroke more. I don't think, uh, that there is any place for this saw in the type of work that I do. I, I, it's too big to carry in a pack. It's um, too big to use with one hand effective, effectively. It is, I just think it's, I just think it's kind of ridiculous. I just don't see, I just, I have never seen the, the need for it or the purpose for it. Plus it's twice the money. I'm surprised that this little one cut, cuts as, big, as good as it does. Um, pretty amazing. So I guess the, the question I would be asked, I'd have to ask myself is, let's say you're gonna go out and you're gonna work in the forest for a couple hours. You can take one saw with you. Which one are you gonna take? You're gonna take the, the pocket boy or you're gonna take the silky big boy? Well, I'm not gonna take either one of these. The saw I'm gonna take into the forest is not even a silky, it's the itchy bond. The Itchy Bond is hands down the very best saw I've ever used. Yes, I understand Silky makes some saws like this, very similar. I would imagine the experience is going to be very similar, but they're expensive. This is not expensive, and as far as I can tell, quality-wise, it's, it's just as good, if not better, and performance-wise, it's better. It's better than these folding saws for several different reasons. Okay, first off, let's talk about cost. This saw right here, the big boy, is going to run you, I think, now the prices are going to change, but I think uh, that when I purchased this, it was about um, $55. $55, and what do you get? Well, you get a saw that's going to fold. That's the difference, right? That's very convenient to have a saw that will fold. This saw, of course, is not going to fold. But you need a sheath. What I have found, it's so big that it doesn't fit into a back pocket, and whenever, when you're working, it falls out of the pocket and you end up going back and looking for it. You know, good thing that it's yellow. Um, so what you have to do is you end up having to buy the big boy sheath, right? The big boy sheath. Now you're at $55. How much is the sheath? Believe it or not, it's $24, which is very expensive for a plastic sheath. Is it a good sheath? It's okay, it's not bad. It has minimal ret retention uh, one way. What would be nice is if it re was, had retention both ways. Um, you know, I don't know, because you, you never know which way you're gonna put it in. It does have a quick release on it, which is very much appreciated if you need to get in and out of equipment. 
you can leave this on your tin pants and then when you go to work you can just snap that on there i do like that so the sheath is fine but what we at 55 65 75 we're at 80 dollars right here for the big boy and the sheath well right here the ichiban the samurai this one how about 35 dollars and you get the sheath and you get an excellent sheath you get a sheath that has not only the quick release buckle like we like we like but it articulates and this may not seem like a big deal uh, but when you're moving around and and you're bending over having that little bit of movement with the saw and the sheath helps you to get a hold of handle and it's really wonderful it's really appreciated so 35 dollars you get the sheath and the saw the ergonomics on this thing are absolutely absolute perfection and i know that because i have spent so many hours using it and i never get fatigued when we do forestry work this is the saw that is fought over this is the saw that everyone wants because it has that wonderful curve to it now when we're like in the previous video we're talking about you know the importance of limbing things up we're limbing up our trees our stand as high as we can what you find is as you're reaching up because it's got this curve you get a lot of, you get a cut on the top it, it, it cuts the branch more on the top and it's easier to reach and it comes down and it breaks cleaner where the straight ones they tend to pinch more often so the ergonomics on this and the shape and the weight and the balance and the size of it it's just everything that's just right it's just perfect uh, the handle the comp the compound and the rubber um, the way it feels you never get any blisters on it it fits my hand perfectly i even have a little uh kind of a guard right there which is nice when you're sawing that you don't come back and rake your knuckles on it i mean it's really incredible the amount of thought and attention to detail that have went into this went this went into this saw i can't help but think whoever it was that built this that came up with this design they must have been a tree person. They must have, have been familiar with saws, used saws, because what they've come up with is absolute perfection. And for $35 with the sheath, it's just unbelievable. It's hard, it's, it's hard to, it's, you can't be beat. I haven't seen anything out there. Now, every time I do one of these saw videos, someone comes out and says, well, the best saw out there is the great big silky, the, they call it the katana boy. You know, it looks like a, it's like a samurai sword. You could, it's huge, it's ridiculous. I, I don't know what what the purpose would be you know i mean i guess to, to quote captain mannering mannering i think we're de delving into the uh the world of fantasy we talking about katana boy style saws you know saws need to be used with one hand because sawing is a two-hand procedure uh, you have to have a hand that's sawing you have to have something that is controlling or holding or working with the hand you know taking care of bind uh, or just moving the branch away uh, so sawing to me is not a two-handed sport it's a one-handed sport and this is <laughs> this is the one sorry silky but i'm just that's my experience so how about this little guy? Uh, this was the first time that I've used it. I've uh, spent uh, oh, an hour or so on it today. This is a great little saw right here too. So this, what's the price on this one? Well, it's, it costs even more than the Samurai right there. I mean, this is uh, 30, $36 last time I checked. This one here, I think I paid $40 for it uh, on Amazon with shipping. That's $40, but you get a folding saw. And when you start looking at the form factor, well, it just blows it away if we're in a condition where we need to be packing stuff. Hunting, bushcrafting, uh, survival, again, dirt biking. You know, I can't, I can't handle this. I can't, I can't take that. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's too big. Now, if I knew, if I was going on a ride and I knew that we were going to be the first through uh, after a winter blowdown, we were going to have a lot of trees to contend with. I would take this saw and I would strap it to my chest protector, or I'd, I'd fasten it to the radiator guard, or something to the to the to the bike, uh, where I could just pull it out and, and cut, and not have to fool with the folding. But if I was going to have something just just in case, in case I needed to clear the trail, um, or a small one that was not necessarily going to be in my hand to be used all day, uh, then this is a good way to go. Um, this is perfect for your truck. This is perfect for a survival saw. This is perfect for a hunting saw, bushcrafting saw. It's, it's really wonderful. The big boy, on the other hand, um, I'm sorry, I just don't, I, I just don't think it's a good design. And, and just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's better. We saw right there, and I didn't cheat, and I didn't try to make one win or the other. This one, this little guy, cut in fewer strokes uh, than the big one did with less effort. But neither one of them can compare to this so this is a tool that's essential 
If you're a homesteader, uh, if you're an outdoor person, if you like to work in the yard, th I just don't think that you're going to you're going to spend thirty-five dollars better than this. I get the question all the time: Hey, we've got five acres. We want to do some clearing. We want to do you know we're in the urban interface. We want to you know we have we don't want to worry about fire. What chainsaw should I get? I'm like, well, I don't think you should get a chainsaw at all. I mean, are you heating with wood? Are you are you doing that type of work? Well, no. Well, we'll get this one right here and get two of them. You could get two for what seventy dollars one for you one for your wife or three if you got the family get one for all of you you can wreak havoc on trees and brush and forest with a family with uh, armed with these guys <laughs> they're they're really really wonderful uh there's also uh, i should probably mention this so the all the, the pocket boy did come with this and a lot of guys were saying oh it comes with a with a scabbard well, this is not a scabbard. This is a display case for, for a retailer with a hook on it. Um, could it be used? Um, I guess. If I was going to use this, I'd probably pop rivet a piece of leather on there, maybe a little strap or canvas, and you could thread that onto a belt. Maybe uh, just drill two holes and zip tie that little guy, bend it out a little bit, and thread your belt through there. It might be kind of handy, um, but it's so small that you can uh, keep it in a pocket. The other thing I was thinking, I'm, I'm really conscious on weight of my, like in my dirt bike pack. Um, I was worried, you know, with all the jostling, this is kind of sharp and that could cut a pack. Um, but you know, that might, might be, maybe that's, would, wouldn't be a bad idea to store it in there, but I can't, I can't justify the weight. I can't take all that extra weight. Um, it all, it all adds up, but uh, that's it. That's my, kind of my, uh, my take on saws. Um, get yourself an itchy bond. I'll put a link in my Amazon store. This is not a paid endorsement. This is not, uh, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. These were all purchased with my own money. Um, this is my experience um, that I'm sharing with you guys. So don't forget to click the thumbs up. Appreciate the, the views and the support and we'll see you guys on the next video.